Can you hear me? Okay, so it's 9.05. Uh, oh, hello, Gus. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay, great. Okay, if it goes out, just um, hopefully I'll hear you. Um, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and start uh, with a round of check-ins, just about 30 seconds. Um, yeah, how's everybody doing? Uh, kind of open sharing here. I will start. Um, so we met Paul Stamets, um, the uh, very famous mushroom grower when we were on Cortez Island. So that was a pretty fun time. Uh, yesterday we saw an owl and the, we, the weather's been rainy here. So I've been having a little hard time with my mood, but um, it's the sun poked out yesterday. So that's me looking forward to this call and so grateful for everybody joining. I will pass to Craig. Hello, good morning. Um, great to virtually see everyone here playing catch up as per usual. Um, life is good. I'll pass it to, um, oh, hey, Griff. Go, Griff. Good morning. Yeah, I'm excited to see what's going on in the comm circle and see how I can help push it forward. Um, I'll, I, I don't know who I need to pass it to, so if someone wants to pass it for me. I can pick it. Um, good morning. I am, yeah, also very excited to see everyone, uh, everything going on here. It seems like a lot of work is happening. And yeah, I had a chill morning researching more for the softgov working group and i'll pass to zeptimus hello uh i'm here like uh i'm starting to record this now so <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, i'm excited i was reading uh some documents and i'm excited to help so i pass the word to jungbell Juan, I think that's you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I've been working uh, towards a draft for a conflict resolution uh, program for the TEC. So um, I hope everyone can like join it in the discussion. And uh, um, I had that talk with Griff on Sunday, so uh, that gave me some uh, ideas to make it simple. And also, I've been uh, seeing Fabian in the blockchain uh, lab uh, that was in the future uh, law summit. Uh, so it was very interesting. And uh, I will pass it to uh, Umberto. Thanks, Juan, for all your effort. It's been uh, really nice um, to, to see that just narrowed down. Um, that's impressive also. Doing good here is night. Uh, I have I've been having a a nice but um, tough week with exam with an exam coming. Um, so everything good. I I just um, have doubts on the on the click up if if it's needed. Maybe we can just do the uh, follow up of stuff in Notion. Maybe that will be easier. And um, well, we can just later talk about that. Sorry, I will pass it to Manu. Hi, everyone. Um, great to be here, as always. Let me just turn on my camera so you can see my face. Um, been helping out um, with the forum, also with the landing page during the weekend. Uh, actually, I got the landing page ready. And actually, I can just share a little bit with you if you guys want. And I've been um, at the same time working on the acknowledgement um, and acknowledgement mechanisms for five pandemics. And yeah, it's been it's been a bless. I have been receiving a lot of support, so it's uh, it's very exciting. So yeah, here's a little preview of what I've been working on. Um, and yeah, we got already a domain and we have everything running. Well, it's still missing 
question, but yeah, I'm excited. So yeah, I pass it to Jeff. Okay, Jeff left. <laughs> then I pass it to um, Goose, Gustavito. We cannot hear you, bro. Me now. Now you can hear me. Cool. Yes. If you, if you just hit on the mute, that will work out. So yeah, I'm, I'm just starting to show around in these community calls. I'm very curious about what you guys are cooking on. And uh, looking forward to see how I can help, where I can contribute outside this community and particularly working on educational programs in Latin America and uh, um, also working with a couple of communities uh, about community currencies. That's what I do what's out here. And pass it to Jeff, who's come back right now. You're on mute, Jeff, in case you're speaking. Or maybe Jeff can hear us. I don't know, Septimus, did you talk already? Yeah, did I already talk? Okay, Santix, what about you? Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here. I think it's the first time I come to a, a talk communication uh, uh, meeting. I'm just uh, amazed by all the stuff that's going on in this group, and I wanted to just uh, come in and, and, and see firsthand how everything is, is evolving. I'm, I'm really excited about all, all, all the stuff that you guys are doing. Uh, I'm going to pass it to... Uh, Craig? Craig and, uh, went already, I think, to Blair, isn't it? Oh, and Fabian? I'll pass it to Blair. OK, yeah. Um, I was, I've been uh, in the Token Engineering Academy classes and having a great time in there. Um, a lot of information for me. Um, and just actually got out of a meeting with Fabian, um, working on uh, a really cool project uh, as part of uh, that course. And um, yeah, that's been a, most of my last week. Um, Fabian, you're up. Maybe not. Sorry, sorry, Blair. Did you did you finish? And is it my turn or? All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's I had a turn. gap for a moment. Um, yeah, it, I, I'm. I, I can just echo what was said before. I'm very, I'm really amazed what's happening in in this space around you guys, and I'm very happy to participate. Um, yeah, I'm participating in the in the workshop right now. We had a session yesterday dealing with what, where I presented some ideas around stability uh, that come from first principles, like whether we can actually construct something intrinsically stable as opposed to just building platforms on the Titanic. And then meanwhile, I'm working with Shevnam on on a basically a framework for ethical reasoning and see if we can generalize an approach so that we can apply to sense like sense making that eventually goes towards creating a kind of a legislative uh, framework for us to uh, operate in a in a crypto space safely because i don't think we should rely on traditional structures because they're too flawed and i'm in the process of getting a visa to bali by the end of the month so that's exciting for me all right check congrats uh Okay, Diana, it was cutting out for the last 10 minutes. Did everybody get a chance to go? I think, I think Blair still needs to go, right? No, everybody no? went. Okay. okay. Everyone. Awesome. We've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to plow ahead. And thankfully, we just drove to the library, so signal should be good. Now. Thank you again for everyone joining. Um, so uh, hopefully everybody can access the agenda. It is in the TEC comms channel if you want to go ahead and jump in and make sure I've listed your name as well under the call agenda so that we can praise you for attending. Um, so I just want to go through the deliverables. 
and update, get an, uh, an update from Griff and share a little bit about the discoveries we had when writing our blog this week. And then we want to spend as much time as possible in the last 30-ish minutes, if we can, to go through the narratives exercise that Manu so wonderfully put together for us. Um, so first, going through the um, deliverables as quickly as possible. Um, the newsletter, we got it out. Um, we'll discover, we'll talk about some learnings in just a minute, but um, I am going to be working with Livy. Um, there's a praise meeting this Friday. Yes, Griffin, Livy. Okay, so if anyone wants to join, this is really interesting to see how the praise quantification process works. And from this meeting, we will be writing every two weeks a newsletter um, and kind of like the leaderboard of the praise. So if anybody would like to attend this Friday, um, we we can send that information in comms channel if anybody wants to join that process. Um, Twitter set up. Blair, how is that going? So we Blair and I had a discussion about the handle that and had a lot of uh, people saying tech MNS was not that easy, but he found token eng commons. Was it Blair? Do you want to update us real quick on what we need to move forward with that? <laughs> yeah, I tried to make it and it, it Twitter truncates it. So I thought the handle length was 15 characters, but um, it won't let me do token ENG commons, unfortunately. So I think we're, I think we just might want to move ahead with TEC MNS. All right, we'll make it sing. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, so that brings us to, oh, the branding and the logo design. Okay. Um, Marco had just posted that update. And yeah, I was having internet troubles this morning. Uh, let's see. Livy, would you mind quickly posting that Figma link I sent you in TEC comps channel so everybody can see it? I was yeah. having trouble. Thanks. So I didn't get yeah, a chance. So if everybody wants to look in TEC comms channel, Livy is throwing the Figma link in there. And this is kind of like the preview of the logo. Um, and I'm in the process with Marco. So let me know when you can see that. And meanwhile, actually, while we wait on that, um, the map of contributors is going on. Um, let's see. Manu, you are handling that. Do you want to just mention to everyone what they need to do and what it is? Yeah, so one of the things that we have identified uh, that most of the communities have as an issue is that they really don't understand like who is really working on what. Um, so what we're trying to do with this um, with this air table is to basically list the names of the people that are contributing to the token engineering comments and as well defining what are the different type of skills that they feel they're strong about and also um, listing what are the different projects that they're engaged with or the different sub projects that they're engaged with within the token engineering comments. And yeah, that's basically the idea. Okay, cool. So if you haven't had a chance and you need help um, jumping into that, feel free to reach out to Manu, but it would be really awesome. I went in and um, did my own the other day and I thought, wow, this is a really super way to track this and have representation so we can all just have visibility into what we're doing as we still figure out the like project management processes that we're all going to be using. And I know ClickUp is on the way from SoftGov, um, is working on some other project management wizardry so this is a process we're working on but for now at least we'll have everybody mapped and everybody can see kind of where everybody's at and ask questions and whatnot so perfect um website uh blair oh, and Manu. oh sorry, sorry. Any questions? i have one question around that that it feels kind of an overlap with the air table what is the difference of the contributor map that you're talking about oh what? no it's the same one sorry oh uh, okay <laughs> yeah, it's the same I think, one. I, I think that maybe the confusion is on, on ClickUp, and ClickUp is just going to be a tool for tracking time, um, yeah, about the different contributions that we're doing. And I think that this is not set in stone yet, but Umberto and a couple of other uh, people are basically coming up with the whole idea and the whole proposal for the team. 
Yeah, it wasn't not only for tracking time, it was uh, for breaking up down the structure of tasks so that we could divide a project, a bigger project into small tasks. tasks. And let's say that I don't know um, how to do a bigger thing, but I know how to do this specific task. So I can commit, assign myself to that task, and that will be better and will be easier for people to onboard without having to know everything. But um, it has been a little trouble to, to get together, like to explain how does it work. And maybe we just don't need that. But that's what we need, like 15 minutes to talk about that with a mirror uh, sharing my screen. And maybe I can uh, explain you how it works and you tell, yes, this works for us or no, nah, let's do it in Notion and that's it. Okay. Yeah. My understanding was that SoftGov was going to try this out. Um, for the working group and then report back like if people like it then we can have a look does that work i think yeah. it would be great to have one platform where all the action items of all the working groups would be there because one problem we've been having is that uh i don't know just like this like projects have multiple leads of the map, for example, of uh, multiple things that are going on are hard to see them from an outside perspective. So is there a block from having everything on Notion? Is it about like people having credentials to jump in or something like that? The Notion requires quite a, a hefty subscription fee is my understanding. Maybe not, I think it's like 10 bucks a person, but um, when we may have like, you know, knows like dozens of people so yeah i guess uh, maybe in the stewards meeting we can address this and maybe we can have a poll of like what project management tools people like I, i'm open to whatever we want to use but i totally agree with you a, a thousand percent uh livia so we need a solution for this so maybe we can identify it as a challenge or problem but yeah we definitely need to all have the working groups in one spot i don't feel attached to any platform <laughs> So we can, can we table that one and come out with like a survey or an async solution to figure that out? Does that work? Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, awesome. Sorry, I'm like a train because we have a lot of things to go, but this is amazing, uh, like super important. Okay, uh, let's. So did everybody have a chance to take a glance at the logo? I don't know where I can find it. In the TEC comms and the token engineering discord and the TEC comms channel. Oh. Everybody who can see it, can you just like give a thumbs up or thumbs down in your screen? And then we can do like a better signaling Opinion. later. I think it's pretty dope. Just like a quick round and then. Basically, uh, the logo is pretty much set. We're going to be playing, uh, Marco's going to be dealing with like colors next. It's kind of a balance right now between, you know, not doing it like so by committee. I've been trying to go out one on one to people and like do little surveying here and there of how people feel about it. But I think the consensus is most people like it. And the next phase is color and like Marco has to do some mock-ups to see like how flexible it is, but I trust him. Um, and hopefully everybody's going to be happy with it. We're just in the final stage of selecting color, but again, we're trying to move as fast as possible so we can like push to get the website and Griff and tech team are kicking ass. So we need to keep up with them. So if anybody has any strong feedback about the logo, strong. please send me a, a direct message. And I've been doing my best to integrate everybody's feedback. But otherwise, you've had a first look, sneak peek. Awesome. I super love it. I can even share one mock-up Marco did that was like uh, on a wall. I sent it to Griff. It looks like Banksy or something. It's pretty rad. I think it's a good mix of like, we don't fuck around, but also it's fun and playful and kind of like superhero-ish. I'll share it. Okay. Oh, thanks, Griff. That's much better. Okay, so um, that's the logo, which a lot of our platforms are kind of hung up and waiting on. So hopefully we can wrap that in the next day or two. Um, and then uh, we have Blair and I spent some time last week working on some web website content. Um, 
Manu or Blair, do you have updates for website um, backend setup and how we would like to move forward with that? I was thinking maybe we do a kickoff work session uh, tomorrow or Thursday. Well, actually, I already started. Um, I shared just when you weren't here. Um, you can check the TC, uh, tccommons.org. Um, I already um, put a WordPress there together with Griff during the weekend. And also, um, I, I got the DV uh, template ready with the content that will be it. Okay, awesome. So what do we need to do to move that forward? Or is it just um, you and Blair working together with what we built so far on the content to like, and Marco to get the Figma? Um, yeah, Manu, I'm, I'm down to jump in a work sesh this week if you want, um, jam on it with you. But I think what you have looks awesome so far. So great work. It looks frozen. Okay, so it's just a matter of kind of reviewing what's there and then making some adjustments. So, um, so Blair, maybe we can do that this week. Yeah, uh, I'll sync up with the new one. Okay, awesome. I know I'm so sorry I haven't had a chance to look at it. Uh, we're out. We were out in the forest this weekend, but thank you so much for hauling so fast on that um and i look forward to seeing that once my internet is functioning tomorrow we're back to mainland um awesome oh yeah and then i saw you guys also set up the forum can you update on that as well Oh, Who did we, this? Looks, looks like we lost Jess for a second there. Uh, Manu, do you have any updates on the forum? Oh, we lost Manu too. Uh, well, what I can say is I know that uh, it's still a work in progress. We, we've overcome the technical barriers, but I don't think that I don't, I'm pretty sure we don't have anything to show people, but the infrastructure is finally there. So, it, and that was a battle. But so we're going forward with it, and it's a uh, it's something that we're hoping to use for um, communicating the tech spec group as well. Okay, rad. Okay, so yeah, Blair, are you up for just like uh, work sessions with me this week, um, and working with Manu as well for getting those front ends sorted for the forum, and also um, to keep iterating on the website. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. Awesome. So we are almost through deliverables. Story Canvas we'll be doing at the end of this meeting. Oh, Trusted Seed Reach Outs. Um, Craig, did you have an update of how that's going and anything else you could need for that project? Um, sure, real quick. It's been going well. I've been reaching out to folks um, whom we have not necessarily been able to link up um, an ETH address with a Telegram handle and got lots of responses. And I think hopefully lots of people actually applying. Um, that's still a work in progress, still following up with people individually. And uh, I'll need to sync up likely with Griff or just get a new pull off that spreadsheet and uh, I'll just keep working on that and keep following up with people. Uh, it's been nice to interact with people virtually, individually, um, as opposed to in larger group settings. So um, I think it's going well. Just just a really quick thing on that. Um, one of the things that is limiting our ability to get some people who have filled out the form is that they say that they are do not want to have their name publicly linked. And so... I'm deleting all of those when I, I did update the form and when they, but when they say that they're not willing to be public with their address, then uh, 
uh, and have their name linked, then then I I I, I can't share that data. So uh, uh, there are some people, and I'll I'll tell you who they are that basically need to fill out the form again and click yes on that box. Otherwise, we can't really do anything because they won't let us share. Okay, that's good to know. And so do you think we need to say anything to those people? Just like this is a reputation token, that's why it's public or add anything to the survey? Or like, should Craig then go back to those people and be like, hey, actually, we need that because this is a reputation token. That's the whole point. And it's totally up to you, no pressure, but just so you know why. Because uh, like just as a single question on the form, there's not really any context. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's probably need to change the question on the form, uh, and uh, I'll, I'm happy to work with Craig, and we can divide and conquer the list of people who say no. I'm not willing to share my information publicly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, cool. And Craig, thank you again for taking on that monstrous beast of a task. You are unbelievable. I can't believe how many people you've contacted so far. Yeah, it's been good. And uh, I'll work with Griff and, you know, definitely have been trying to communicate the public nature of signing up and, and how things are currently configured. And that's, we need that linkage and totally respecting people that do not want uh, their address link. So there's been a lot of questions and a lot of conversation. So uh, it's been good. Awesome. Uh, very cool. Okay. I'm going to quickly try to wrap the deliverables so then we can hear from Griff because that'll be about 10 minutes and then we'll see how we can go for the story canvas. So um, next things, onboarding video and TLDR, that's on my list for this week in addition to YouTube setup because um, we're already starting to get recordings for the calls. So I'm going to uh, work on setting up the YouTube this week and then I'm going to start the document for onboarding video and uh, I think that should be, you know, not take so long to figure out a plan for that i and whoever wants to volunteer basically will just be like one-liners and a bunch of different faces of reading to like welcome people in a video to the channel and um so yeah i'll send directions and all that once we move a little bit further um i have a discord subscribe bot that's for later and then humberto i really would like to give you time to present your news proposal but i don't think that's going to be today because we have the story canvas but i want to honor that and it's super awesome what you put together so if we can table that for next week but i just want to mention humberto put together this really rad like news proposal and he I have a TV background and was a producer and he looks like a producer the way he put it all together, like time blocking out the news and like either a podcast or however. So I think this will be super fantastic, um, but it's kind of a nice to have right now, like more for the launch um, or when we are can iterate to that point. But I just want to mention and like honor you for putting in the time and I hope that we can give you the time to present that next week. Awesome. Nice. Okay, so um, next thing, and I'm going to try to time box it to five minutes if we can, <laughs> um, is to get an update on the tech spec and share a little bit for everyone to gain some of the learnings um, when we were writing the praise. Uh, you guys all saw the blog posts. Uh, we had some learnings while we were writing that and how to communicate because it is a little challenging right now because uh, basically this whole C stack and uh, TEC, and what is the difference between the common stack and TEC? Are they merging? People are asking, what's the deal with tokens? And the thing is, we can't answer a lot of these questions because the community will vote. So I'm gonna let Griff take this on and just share a bit of a tech spec update. And we need to be the, like, uh, all of us are gonna be the advocates and kind of the communicators on how to explain to people what how the tokens will, um, be functioning in this. So uh, Griff, take it away. Okay, there's a lot there. So um, so the common stack token is a non-transferable token that's kind of like a reputation score for people who we're just trying to curate a group of trusted people that are uh, value-driven, not profit-driven, uh, or at least not solely profit-driven, you know, so that people feel good about including these group of people that are not just going to pump and dump your coin, right? And that's the common stack token. And our, we need that because the way that we structure our commons is that we allow 
a group of people to have a lot of governance power for super cheap at the beginning to, to kickstart the economy. So there's, uh, unlike source cred, which bootstraps economies with labor, we're bootstrapping economy with, with uh, funding. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are really focused on short-term profits. And so we use vesting and uh, basically uh, a gated entry for the first block to make sure that the speculator archetypes that want to participate in this economy come in when it's safe for them to be pump and dumping, which is after the hatch when the economy is open for everyone to use. So that's the place for the C-Stack token. Uh, because we put in this whole, a lot of effort into this legal structuring behind it and the, um, you know, we've already curated a really cool group of people that have skin in the game through donation. Uh, they, and, and also people who are just putting in volunteer hours uh, in this, like uh, the economy we're trying to build. Uh, we have a nice curated list of people already uh, with a legal, with an actual legal foundation so that they can feel safe buying into any general partnership uh, DAO. Uh, and we're doing our best to make sure that that, that exists. Uh, so because of that, and it's already there, it's kind of easy to just use it for the token engineering commons. In fact, it's kind of its purpose. Uh, so that's the C stack token, but the, uh, the, the token engineering commons uh, may not may want to include other people like when the onboarding working group comes in, and they say, hey, like we need to onboard these different groups, we need certain people who are going to provide funding and strong governance and make good decision making. And these are this group of people. And then we have uh, these projects that also want to use the funding and uh, to you know, provide token engineering public goods. Maybe both of these groups need to be included in the hatch and they're not holding C-Stack tokens. So then we have to figure out uh, with onboarding group and the legal working group, if we should give those people C-Stack tokens and call that the entry whitelist to the token, uh, to the hatch. To where we, we initialize initialize the bonding curve with funds, or if we create another token, which we can call the TEC hatch token, the tech token, another tech token that no one even sees. It's not like a real token. It's more just a list of people that are able to buy into the hatch that would include C stack token holders and other people. Uh, this is a decision that hasn't been made yet, so we have to wait until the legal working group and the onboarding working group can coordinate with everyone to make, make these decisions. So, hey, ambiguity, what do we do? Who knows, that's your job. You guys gotta communicate that shit. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, the other piece is the tech spec. So the goal of the tech spec group is to, is to not only deploy the DAO, but we're using some really powerful language of calling this the technical specification group to make sure that we actually communicate the technical specification that we're launching. And the idea here is we as a community need to be able to decide the parameters of our token economy, but the parameters are hidden in code. So the tech specs uh, uh, power and what we're trying to do is pull all that stuff out of the code and inform our community. In we need to be able to make informed decisions on these parameters. So. What I've been working uh, with, uh, he's not here, but uh, Dahi, Dahi uh, who helped me with the tech spec a little bit, and Sam, obviously, and the whole OneHive crew, to actually um, pull out the parameters that we're using for this first test and define them and list them in a way that a normal person can read and be informed on what is possible to tweak. And then with the experience of playing with it, and this like handbook of what the parameters are. Once we have the forum up, we can start discussing the impacts of different parameters and what can we can choose. And people will have this foundation where they can dig if they if they're curious and they want to you know be part of the decision making process of what parameters we use for this token economy. So that's the tech spec working group, uh, and I think my five minutes is up. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Griff. And I really want to allow time for questions as well. However, um, we're trying to get to the story canvas. So I think maybe we can have some discussion around this um, in the weekly sync, like a Q&A a little bit. Or what may be better is that we start developing an FAQ 
But for right now, the narrative that we're kind of said uh, in writing the blog was, you know, when people ask about these things, it's basically, hey, people, for right now, you're getting double the tokens. And we actually don't know what that's going to mean because that's up to you. Like, so actually, this is very empowering. And this is even more reason why people, you know, will be happy to receive tokens because then they will be able to decide and vote on what parameters we choose. And if you're really interested to go deep into this, then you might want to join the onboarding group because um, also it's good to know that Angela and the students from TE Academy are actually going around and interviewing dozens of stakeholders. So these are like our ecosystem friends at OneHive. These are people in our own community. Any of you, she might reach out to you to understand like, the people who want to hold these tokens to contribute to the commons, what are they looking for? Like, what are you hoping to get out of this? And with this understanding, we can develop the best model possible. So if you're really interested to go into that, then I suggest you you might want to jump into one of the onboarding calls or check out um, the document from Angela that they're putting together. Um, so I... Are, are there any questions we can allow for like a few minutes because I don't want to I want to give everybody an opportunity if there's something burning right now to ask the Griff. You see me or I cannot hear? Oh. I can, can hear. hear oh, okay. Does anybody have any burning questions for Griff or Livy that we can tackle in a couple of minutes? Otherwise, um, feel free She's to just in speaking. I can't hear her too. Oh, that's so weird. I can hear her. I, can hear I cannot her. hear her. Okay, well, it's she, I she can hear asking, her. She was asking if there's any questions. Yeah, uh, any questions? Any burning questions? Otherwise, if you have questions, you can put it in the TEC comms channel and then everybody can see the answer because maybe they have the same question and we can use it to develop our FAQs. Yeah, feel free to DM or ask in public and uh, either way, let's get you guys informed because if you guys are informed, you'll pass the that understanding to everyone else whether it's directly or indirectly. Okay, awesome. Well, I think we've gotten through the main uh, stuff. So um, <clears throat> I guess, how is everybody on time? If we go like 10 minutes over, is that okay? Or will anyone need to jump before we jump into the next place? Griff's making a face. That's fine if you need well, to jump. Livia has a uh, the soft Ooh, call right after. That's right, okay. Well, let's see, I I'm sorry. Of course, that's right after this. So <laughs> let's see, we can let's see what we can get done in eighteen minutes. Uh, and usually, yeah, we we'll like to be a little more chill, but we've got some urgency. So Manu, uh, take it away. Lead us through for eighteen minutes on the story canvas. It's sadly uh, it's not enough time, but I hope I hope we can make some progress here. Um, well. The idea of the story canvas is to basically define what are the different uh, type of audiences that we're going to be targeting, what is, it, what is the um, kind of purpose that is bringing us together, what are the different key messages, call to actions, stories, different type of possible campaigns, what are the outcomes, and what are the indicators or KPIs that we want to track. Um, so one of the things that we did in the past was that everyone was just coming in and putting their ideas here. But the thing is that we realize that we actually have two phases of uh, the TEC comments. And the first phase is the hashing phase. And then the second phase is after the hatching is done. Um, so I'm sure that we want to um, find different type of people for each type of phase, each type of the phases. And therefore, we're just going to focus on creating a new story campus that will be targeting the hashing, um, the hashing event. So yeah, here is basically um, all the description about the different sections within the campus. And sadly, I don't think that we have enough time to go through it and then review it. But what I would suggest uh, is that we actually put some, some time into this. And in next meeting, we review it and we have it, or maybe during the week, we review it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I would suggest. What do you guys think? So then um, I share with you guys on 
the TEC Commons channel. I just shared with you the link. It's it's asking uh, me if you can access it. That'd be nice. If you cannot, um, then the password is token engineering. It's written like this. If you don't have access. Does everyone has access? In which channel is it? Uh, I share it with you again. Um, let me just share my screen so you can see it. It's in the Token Engineering Commons channel. One second, let me share my screen. Here. The, the TE Comms channel. Yeah, so you go here and you see the TEC Comms channel. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, so yeah, I see that there's a couple of people already there. Um, so yeah, as I said, instead of focusing our time here, we should focus on time here in the hashing. Um, yeah, so I'm sure that there's a lot of things that we can take from, uh, from here, from this. So if you want to have a quick look, feel free to do so. But remember, maybe Griff, if you can give us an idea about what what is the goal of the hatching that would be uh, that would be even I, I would say that that would be very very helpful yeah so I would say hey feel free to go in there while I rant for like two minutes and just start writing things in uh, he uh, Manu has a really nice explainer of each box just pick a box and and uh, if you think you know some things start writing uh, we have 15 minutes and and a bunch of really awesome brains focusing in on this board. Let's use it. Um, as far as the hatch. So the hatch is one of the necessary evils of a bonding curve because uh, when you have a bonding curve, uh, the one thing that everyone knows about bonding curves who study it for a little bit is you want to be the first person to buy. And so when you are the first person to buy a bonding curve, you get the cheapest price. Uh, so to, to deal with that uh, imbalance opportunity, we have a couple of limitations for the for the first buy of the bonding curve to initialize the bonding curve. Number one, it's a big bulk buy. So everyone gets the same price. Instead of this like, oh, anyone can buy in and then the price goes up, everyone gets the same price and this is, and this is part of the hatch. Also, to mitigate the benefits of being the first buyer and getting a super cheap price and a guaranteed profit almost, uh, we have a heavy vesting requirement. So when you buy into the hatch, there will be a period of time, which this will be voted on by our community, it's called the cliff, where 100% of the tokens are vested, or are, are, have a vesting requirement. They're locked. They're not even vested. It's a locking thing. So the tokens are locked. You can't sell them. Uh, you can't sell them into the curve, but you do get them super cheap. So in the hatch, when you buy in, the hatch price might be five cents, and the price at the end will be ten cents. And you can see this on the Common Stack website exactly why this is. It's kind of like when you buy into the hatch, you get the average price, which is from zero to ten cents. You get five cents or something. Maybe it's three cents. Whatever depends on our curve. And uh, you get that average price, and the final price is going to be higher. So this is a very interesting dynamic uh, that is very exciting for people who to buy in because you almost you, you can see a direct um you know uh benefit uh but to mitigate that it, when people buy into the hatch not all of them funds go to create the economy in fact this is the great thing about what we can do with this dynamic is we can divert some funds to go into the funding pool the funding pool is like the classical donation uh stream so it's like the pot of funds that the token holders get to govern that they can use to fund public goods in the token engineering space. So when people buy into the hatch, some percentage of the funds will go to the economy, some percentage of the funds will go to the funding pool. And uh, the hatch dynamic, the hatch culture is going to be limited. So we're not going to let anyone buy into the hatch. We don't need to promote this to the world. We only need to promote it to the token engineers that and, and the community that's on the whitelist. 
And so those, I feel like that's enough perspective. What do you think, Manu? Can you hear me? Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's great. Uh, it would be also great if you can tell us, uh, Griff, what are, the, what are the type of people that you think are essential for this and, and why? It's, it's, yeah, just to get a little bit of uh, understanding. The people who buy into the hatch are going to be the whales of the commons. And that's just the way it is. So these are the people who end up with the most governance decisions. They end up with the most skin in the game. So we are looking very specifically to exclude profit-seeking, uh, pump and dump, you know, DeFi bros. The chads are not welcome in this commons. Now, of course, there are some people who may be chads in some parts of their life and really important token engineering influencers in other parts of their life. So it's not like, it's not like one person is, uh, is not a multitude, a multitude of like uh, archetypes, right? So, uh, but the archetype that we need to promote and the opinion and, and the thing that we need to make sure people understand is that if you buy into the hatch, you need to be focused on actually providing value towards public, the public goods that token engineering can create. So that needs to be the focus of the people who come into the hatch. They need to understand this is not about making a profit. This is about creating value for the entire world in, in be, enabling people to create safe economies that are well engineered and have the resources uh, accessible to them. Freely, free and easy to access resources to create economies uh, to change the world. And so that's, uh, that's the public good token engineering hopes to create. And uh, that's, the pub that's the focus that needs to be on the top of the mind of the hatchers that come in. Great. Yeah, thank you for that, Griff. Does anybody else have anything they want to share? I think that you're muted. You're muted, Griff. I think you're trying to talk, but you're muted. Jess was saying if there's anything else that people want to share. Well, I mean, I'm very happy. I'm very happy what I'm hearing. And I'm just curious, you know, in which area or which format are these kind of things explored and discovered for like, for like further de development, like not, not within this context, but in general, I'd be very curious too. Can you, can you go a little deeper? I don't understand the question. Well, I mean, the, 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 the dynamics that you just outlined to basically prevent the problem of whales and, and create an alternative to that. We, I, I've worked in a, on a similar area in 2017 where we wanted to do a launch and we didn't, but, but, but there was, was a lot of considerations that went into that. And it's something that I'm very curious and would like to contribute because mainly because it never really, we never really got to the phase where we actually deployed it. And I was just wondering, you know, is it, who is having those discussions and is there a possibility to participate in that? Yeah, Very that'll be the onboarding. That's the onboarding working group mostly. Uh, they're the, probably the ones that are deep diving into this. It's going to be a tough thing to do because what we'll end up doing is saying, hey, here's how many tokens you can buy. Like everyone will be given kind of a max that they can purchase. And it's going to be based off of their, the tokens, the C stack tokens that they have or the tech tokens that they have, the TEC hatch tokens that they, that they have. So depending on different people's trust levels, different people will be able to have um, a whale role uh, if they choose to put skin in the game, right? Because there is this limit, there, there needs to be this balance between like the, you know, we wanna have, we wanna value everybody's perspective, but at the same time, if someone puts $20 into the TEC and someone puts a million dollars into the TEC, person put in a million dollars kind of has more skin in the game in the future of the of this economy sure so there is this balance I, mean, I, I, of I, 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 I understand it's very much in the onboarding for this particular hatch uh, but uh, what I was uh, expressing my curiosity was more to pursue that kind of direction because I believe that that whole approach is is much 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 richer even though you know it's an amazing step in the first direction but what comes after that like for future iterations that's um, basically where my interest is. So this, this, is, this is the C-Stack token. This is exactly why we have a C-Stack token. 
And and uh, part of the goal here is to have a multi-game, like game theoretical system, where if you have C-Stack tokens, and we uh, those will allow you to participate in this first hatch of the TE Commons, right? But if you misbehave in the TE Commons, we can see that. And so we remove the prisoner's dilemma issue of, or we, we try to use the, the multi-game positioning of the C-Stack token to say, if you misbehave in the TE Commons, then you will not be able to participate in other hatches as well, right? And so that's and that's part of the token design of the C-Stack token, where we're also creating a max trust score for every C-Stack token holder based off of reviewing their application to the common stack. I actually look at it and we say, oh, is this person like, you know, how credible is this person? How much information do we have that this person is value-driven, over-profit-driven? Uh, and and we we give a subjective trust score to every applicant, and that enables them like the highest trust score is like Simon de Rouvier, who invented the token bonding curve, right? Like he can he can have ten percent of the token engineering comment. He can have ten percent of the C stack token. Yeah. So sorry, we've got four minutes left, and I wanted to be able to do checkouts and wrap. And I, this is really important dialogue. So I think. I mean, this is going into the hard dev gov discussion of, you know, quadratic conviction voting. A lot of these things are still being modeled, but maybe we do need a channel for that. So let's think about where we can start to document this. And yeah, onboarding group, I guess, is the primary. But um, yeah, we have some documentation to do and looking at some of the different options. And Fabian would love to have your feedback. And Juan, I see you putting your hand up. So maybe we can start a document or, uh, yeah, I will with Ange and we can start the just keep going in the comms channel or um, let's come up with a way that we can express these ideas and start to put them together so I hear you and Juan I want to hear what you're saying but yeah sadly we're always on crunch um, we've got four minutes so quick checkouts um, thanks everybody I feel this is super productive I wish we can go longer we can keep thinking about maybe making this a little longer or having a meeting where we discuss some of the have an open meeting or uh, Q&A's with Griff so um, I pass to Santi Quick checkouts. Hello, I'm here. We're just checking out of this meeting so that we can go to the SoftGov meeting. Yeah, I'm checking out. Okay, cool. Pass to Manu. Okay. Um, yeah, just uh, just to clarify, we're gonna go back to the mirror board uh, whenever you guys want, but we're gonna review it together uh, hopefully next week. Uh, but yeah, just go there, uh, help us out with that, and yeah, if you have any questions, reach out to Griff. He knows way more uh, how the whole system will work. And yeah, let's get it. Let's get it done. And thanks everyone for contributing. I'll take the next. Thank you guys so much for this. Uh, sorry for ranting. Uh, feel free to do this Miro board during the soft gov call. You know, at the beginning, we're just doing intros and that'll be nice. It, it's a great multitask thing and we need as much, uh, Manu and the team can use as much of this data as possible. It's really critical for us to, to design the right system for communicating these ideas. So uh, thank you guys for listening to me rant and I'll pass it to Livia. Um. Yeah, uh, great call, everyone. And all of these topics that were coming up, they are directly related to the onboarding working group, and some of them are already being looked at. And we'll have an overview in the soft gov of what the, the, the onboarding working group is up to, since they are somehow correlated. So, so yeah, I see you guys there in a minute. I'll pass it to Zeptimus. Okay, uh, I was hearing like the, this whole call and it was amazing. Like, and especially what Griff was talking about the building a lot of new economies around the world that can be like changing the whole thing of the world. And that's, that's amazing. That's really amazing. If we can do that, wow, it's, it's going to be so cool. I, I'm, I'm very glad I'm here. And I pass to Blair. 
Yeah, just shout out to all the stewards. I feel like this distributed group of open source collaborators is flying at light speed right now. And um, I'm happy to be along for the journey. So nice job, y'all. Uh, let's pass it to YGG. Uh, yeah, hey, thanks everyone. Awesome call, incredible work. It's, I love the high speed collaboration and everyone's uh, super on point. So it's nice to see everyone coming out. I think this group amongst what I've been tracking in the whole crypto emergence world is on the right track. And I, uh, yeah, there's some innovative ideas here that uh, I don't see anywhere else. And I think that's why we get this attraction of this sort of high caliber talent, everyone bringing a, a lot to the table. So it's an honor to be here and uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, and I'll pass it to, uh, I'll pass it to, let's see, um, who else, uh, AMW Fund, <laughs> who is that? Hi, that's, that's me, that's Craig. I'll change that. Oh, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just ditto everything that everyone has said. This is awesome. And I'll see you at Sofka. And I'll pass it to uh, Fabian. Oh, you're still muted, Fabian. Okay, yeah. So, such a pleasure to be here. I'll write something in the onboarding chat uh, so we can keep the it short. Onboarding chat. Chat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll pass it to Juan. Uh, Griff, nothing that I, I would uh, thank you for uh, the, the discussion we had on Sunday. It was uh, very enlightening for uh, the work that I've uh, been doing uh, about uh, the conflict resolution. So if everyone, if anyone wants to see it, uh, the link is in SoftGob. And the basic is like um, about having graduate sanctions. And it's like um, the first idea that I have is like when you play sports, like um, um, first you get, you get a verbal warning and then you can get like a yellow card. And if you accumulate get yellow cards, then you have a, a, a red card that would uh, like affect privileges, uh, like uh, um, affect various privileges. And uh, um, I think that uh, that would also uh, help to uh, not um, uh, uh, lose the speed in the game when there are conflicts, because sometimes when, when a conflict arises, like everything stops. And uh, it, with this like, uh, uh, graduate sanctions, maybe the, there can be like fast answers for uh, common issues. And then there could be an, another comp more complex structure when, when there is no like uh, consensus on the, on the matter. And then uh, th there could be like a, a scaling of the, of the conflict um, with negotiation processes. So everyone feel free to, to, to join and review. Nice, and we'll pass it to Gus. Hey, what's up, Gus? Go for it. Hey, <laughs> that that's cool, Juan Carlos. I, I'm definitely looking forward to to have a look and in, in in that document for conflict resolu resolutions and 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 give a hand if 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 I see I can help you somewhere. Uh, just to close this, I just have to say that I'm super excited about this being shaped. Uh, this is my first like full uh, token engineering commons meetings. Um, yeah, I'm just remembering last year talking with Griff in Barcelona when I was asking, yeah, Griff, but what is the first commons? What are we we building the first? Um, I remember you sharing this idea about token engineering commons, and yeah, I'm just so sort of super excited of of being this shape at already. And I think I was the last one. I'm the last one, but be? Okay. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm really happy to this. I'm working also in this um, canvas. I have already put some stuff more. And thank you very much. Have a good night. And Jess, did you go? Yep, I went. Thank you. I'm going to SoftGov. Meet you there. See you next week, same time. Bye. Have a beautiful week. Bye. Have a beautiful week. Thank you, everyone.